This technique makes red demon flesh painting a piece of cake. Now we're gonna introduce you to Shoshi. She's an amazing pro painter who specializes in flesh painting. This is a clip from the lesson she gives in our Patreon, Paint Pro. If you wanna see the full thing and learn more, click in the description below. Enjoy this video and happy painting. Hi, I'm Shoshi from Shoshi's Minis, and I'm going to be collaborating with Knights of the Game Table for a special tutorial of Bloodmaster of Corn, Herald of Corn. We're going to be painting red demon skin, and also we'll be doing a full paint up of the model in a longer version of this video. So make sure you follow me on all my social media at Shoshi's Minis, and make sure to check out the longer version. Hi, I'm Shoshi's Minis, and we're going to be painting this Bloodmaster Herald of Corn. As you can see here, um, I've got him primed black, and then I did a quick base coat um, using some Mephiston Red. Um, I happen to have the airbrush, and so I just did a quick airbrush, but you can use the regular Mephiston and just do thin coats, two couple thin coats, maybe three, four. Um, to get it to look like this. And so now I'm going to show you where we're going to go from here. And so I want to shade him before I highlight so that I can get all of the recesses and everything. And I think I'm going to use either, I think I'm going to use Carolsberg Crimson for that. And the reason why I want to use that and not a black or a Nuln oil or something like that is because it's going to bring out some of the more red tones it's gonna have it has a little bit of a purple quality to it and hopefully I don't spill that so I want to show you how this works and look if, if I were to use Nuln oil on this it would be darker for sure but it would also be uh, it would dirty up my red and I want a really bright beautiful vivid red so I want to use a red tone to shade that I'm gonna do that all over the place here. Not too liberal, because I wanna be able to, again, not have everything shaded too dark. And you can always go, you can always do thin, thin coats first and lighten up later. Notice that his armor also has red overspray on it, and that is totally okay because ultimately we're gonna paint over all that. When I paint skin, I paint, so look at this, look at that, right there on his chest. See how that's going in all the crevices, it's really nice. When I paint skin, I like to paint from the inside out, so anything on the inside of his armor is gonna be red, right? Because that's his skin, and then there we go, see how that goes into the recesses there? We can do that here too. We can, we can do that everywhere, technically, because it's gonna read as a dark color, whether or not it's black. So, let's put some on his face. Oh yeah, very nice. We're pushing this around so that it doesn't pool in any one spot too much. Right next to the inside of the skulls and that armor on the hands, especially the fingers. Okay, we're getting into a good place now. All right, so that is the first of my shade coat. I need to do some more right there. Get some into those skull eyes. I'm just gonna check to see. Red is a very, very good base color for um, for gold. So this is actually gonna work out great. It's probably one of the reasons why. Well, red just looks good with with gold anyway. All right, so that's that's my first step. Now what I'm gonna do 
because I'm gonna hair dry this. I'm gonna take a second. I'm gonna meet myself in hair dry. All right, that looks good. There might be a few pockets left where it's still wet and then those I can smooth out. Or just leave them to dry. I can do that as well. All right, so now, so I have a dark red. That's my Mephiston. My next red is my Evil Sun Scarlet. It's not as red. It's more orangey. And so I'm going to use this as my first highlight. Put that on the palette. And remember that if you're using the air, pa air, air paints like that, then you're going to need to do a few more coats because the air is thinner. Unless you're airbrushing. And in that case, if you're airbrushing, it just does all the work for you. Okay, so see how I am highlighting this is my first highlight and I'm pushing this to the apex of the volume I'm trying to keep it as smooth as I can right I try not to hit any of that shadow go on his horns here all of this There's two phones I'm really pushing pushing my highlights so that I have a good contrast and orange is the reason why you're using orange and not white to highlight is because if you use white to highlight any kind of red you're gonna get pink right whereas if I use the orange it's in the same family because it has red in it it will read it will still read as red and we're gonna do some other tricks to make it see it's already looking demonic and cool let's go ahead and do another coat of orange on his chest to show you how I can get that nice and smooth same thing on his other muscles his abdominal muscles here and on this part of his neck you don't have to highlight every single thing think about where the light is think about where is the sunlight hitting his his body so up here for sure right this elbow this this part of his lap i'm pulling the paint toward the part where i want it to be brightest and what that does is not only does it blend it nice, but it leaves that ball of paint on that apex of where you're bringing that paint up so that it, it is the brightest. So like for instance on this booty here, always, always paint the booty. I'm, I put that ball of paint on the top of the gluteus and now I'm gonna pull it toward the part where I want it to be the brightest right red and orange are very transparent so it's important to have these layers if you prime your model with black you might actually want to um, go in with a base layer of a burgundy on top to Zenithyl prime it rather for a corn demon rather than the straight red if you're hand brushing it especially okay There's his legs. Now, remember where the light is hitting. The light is gonna be more on this side of the leg than on the inside. So same thing on this, this part of his leg, on this ankle. It's going really fast, it's nice. To the back of his hand. Now, 
watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the side of my brush and I'm going to kind of, it's called over brushing, just going to brush over. It's not quite dry brushing because your, your paint, your brush is loaded with paint. And we're going to go up the side of the head again. And remember the top of the head is going to be that bright orange where the bottom of the head leave, leave it. Don't even highlight it at all. Right? He's getting there. Okay. We're almost done with the red skin. We're very close. We've got to make sure to get each one of these individual fingers. Try not to just slather paint over them so that no paint gets in between them. You see how I'm going in here with just a little bit of orange. All right, on the spots, I want to be really nice and bright. I'm going to go ahead and do one last little coat of this same orangey red. It's looking really, really nice. There's a spot on his face where there's a little bit too much wash. That I can go in with my Mephiston, my darker red, and just work on that. Okay, that is the good, that is the second step. Okay, the third step is my orange. Now this is, this is really critical, again, for the highlights. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get, go two steps up. This is much brighter much brighter than my last step, right? But we're gonna do what we're gonna glaze back over, and this is what makes red so nice, is that glazes very nice over orange. But first, we're gonna paint these highlights in pretty, pretty strong. Oh, and then this is much smaller. I'm gonna focus these spots on the spots that I need to be the brightest. So a lot on the face, just these little parts that are going to be the brightest. This is your, this is your equivalent of edge highlighting, right? We're doing our, our edge, our edge highlighting on this. Do it on the pointy parts on the middle of the horns right here where it's the brightest. See that? It's really obvious right now. It looks really garish and weird. But when we get to our fourth step, you'll get to see the magic happen. Okay. So let's now, again, we're gonna only focus this orange on the brightest spots where that highlight is. So not everywhere. Cap of that knee right there. Part of that arm. Let's get his pectoral muscles. Let's look at that. Notice that this is a smaller highlight. I don't want it to cover the entire part that the last highlight did. Just, just where I want it the brightest. And don't forget, we're gonna do a glaze of red back over the top of it to blend it all in. So it's gonna look really nice. See that already? He is, he is mad looking. He's awesome. Okay. Look at those toes. All right, on the back, you'll see, again, small. So this is the highlight of the highlight. Can you see that? And try to keep it smooth. It's gonna be so much easier than those first couple layers were because you've already got those layers underneath it. So now we're just bringing those up. touching those spots that are the brightest. So on the back here, think about where the light is. It's gonna hit right here, 
and it's going to kind of radiate out a little bit from the center and that's it. Same thing on this side. Wherever those little, there's little bumps and warts on his back, I'm going to focus on that spot because those are going to be the lightest. And then on his fingers, focus on the knuckles because that's where the most light is going to touch. And then on the back of his head, just on the very pointy parts. All right, we've got a really, really good base now. Now, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of that orangey, mm, actually, do I want orangey or do I? I'm gonna take a mix of that orangey and the darker red that I use for his base. So a little Mephiston and a little red Evil Scarlet. And I'm gonna thin this out with some Lamia Medium just a little bit, because if I use water, it could break on me. So if I use medium, it will be really smooth and nice. And I'm just gonna glaze that over. Look how beautiful and beautiful red that is. Glaze that over the orange. So like I said, two steps up and then one step down. That's what this glaze will do for us. Watch it when I watch when I do the uh, the head. It's going to be magic. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You can use this technique on any red. Look at that. Look at that face. Any red that you use, you can use it with red ink. If you don't have, you know, if you don't want to use um, a medium, and it will be vivid. Oh, look at that. He's beautiful. And then if I want to go back in and give it another little zing, I can go back in with my orange again and pop it in the hot in the highest spots, especially on the face. You're gonna want to go back in with that orange one more time to really make that the focal point of your model. And on the little pointy parts of his horns. Wow, okay, a little bit more of this glaze over the hands. Watch what happens when we glaze the booty. You can do this back and forth as much as you need to until it looks right. You know, pop it back up, glaze it back down. However you need till it looks just right to you. I need a little bit more lamey medium. Oh, that brush is dirty. Hold on a second. Okay. I want to stress how important the, the medium is in this. If you're not going to use a medium, then try an ink instead. But don't use a straight up paint and thin it down with water because it may not it may not lay it may not dry as evenly and as nice there we go Get that hand. all right that is that is red skin all right so if you'd like to see the rest of this model being painted go ahead and sign up for the long version and you'll get to see the rest of this being painted